Welcome back, folks, to the WP Tonic Roundtable Show. We record this every Friday at around 8.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I've got a small but enthusiastic panel. We're gonna go we're gonna do something because the panel is a little bit limited. We've had a number of people, naughty panelists that can't attend. Um this episode we're going to do something slightly different in this episode folks we're going to take a couple of generalistic subjects and throw some light based on our extensive wordpress experience and online marketing experience as well but firstly i'd like to introduce my powerful but small <coughs> panel i've got my friend john Locke. john would you like to introduce yourself to the listeners, listeners and viewers yep uh, John Locke, Lockdown Design and SEO, uh, helping manufacturers uh, with SEO and web development uh, throughout the course. That's great. And then we've got Spencer Forum. Would like to introduce yourself to the listeners <laughs> view, Spencer? Absolutely. Spencer Foreman from WP Launchify, and we focus on helping people with membership uh, sites, e commerce, specifically with marketing automation on WordPress, which is really today's topic, uh, I guess, the, the power of using the platform of WordPress for clients that may have been, been otherwise on SaaS products and so forth. And we're going to start off this discussion because um, listeners and viewers, I've had a rough morning. I've been abused this morning already. <laughs> um, I had an, a possible new client approach me. Um, I had a couple of websites, a couple of WooCommerce websites, not really totally... Um, because I specialize in membership and learning management systems. So it wasn't really a total fit, but I thought um, if I couldn't help him, I could refer him to somebody that could help him. So um, it sent me a very extensive um, video with a, a lot of things wrong with two established websites, or maybe three actually, it had three WooCommerce sites um, taking quite a bit of money and they, they um, endless lists of problems with him and he had an endless list of people that had been working for him um, all had been dismissed uh, um, and he seemed to know um, he seemed not to be happy with the design work or anything else that had been done on the site but on the other hand he seemed to know precisely what design work he wanted so that's a bit of a contradiction um, so um, some slight red flags were up, but I thought um, um, he gave me a call out the blue um, and the conversation didn't go that well, folks. He wasn't giving me a chance to say much. And then um, it ended with him verbally starting to abuse me, folks. So um, he's not going to be a client of mine. So, John... Um, where did I go wrong? Where, where did I go wrong, John? I, I don't think you went wrong. And I'm going to preface this by saying I've had a number of these types of prospects reach out to me over the past, you know, three or four years. Uh, one thing that I used to really put first and foremost, before I ever started specializing in SEO for, for industrial uh, companies. One of the things that I experimented with was positioning around WooCommerce and e-commerce. And that's one of the things I was trying to get found for. And so I had a lot of people reach out to me and it was almost always the same story. And it sounds very similar to the, the, the tale that you are telling us is that people, they hired um, somebody to do their web development. And I can almost, you know, I'd put money on that, that like 90% of these were offshore not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, but it was always like, uh, you know, oh, this is, you know, like 70 or 80% there, but here's all the list of things that we want changed. And, you know, it, we want you to come in and do it and give us a price and this and this and that. And, you know, I'd give people a quote, but it, it was, I, I think it was always like higher than what people expected. They expected somebody to come in with, you know, a, a, a lower price. The truth of the matter is, is like when you're dealing with something as complex as um, e-commerce and a lot of these sites, you know, WooCommerce, I have, we have to get familiar with, you know, what you have set up as far as your products, what all extensions of, of WooCommerce you have set up, what, 
you know, with your theme. These are all things that, that we have to get familiar with. We can't just hit the ground running at 100 miles an hour. Uh, and that's the reason why. Uh, I don't think you did anything wrong. But, yeah, if somebody's verbally abusing you, like in, in the beginning, or if you just get a funny vibe from them, or if they've told you that, like, they had 17 other people work on it and they couldn't get up to par, but maybe you will, look at the common denominator. That's all I got to say. It's better on just – Referring, refer him to someone you don't like. There you go. He said. To, he said to me, um, "I've got the, I've got it on the stage, you know. I've got all the files zipped, and I've just sent you a link. Can you just put it on your staging site, and then tell me what the problems are?" And I said, "I can, but I'm going to charge you for that." Yeah. And that's when when it's really started to go down the wrong way. This conversation. It just uh, what do you reckon, Spencer? Well, I would say as a general rule, the best way for a freelancer in the WordPress space to think about clients and even client prospects is to think of them like dating. If anybody remembers that, if you're married, that's fine. But the point is personal relationships and business relationships really are the same thing and there's parallels. So for example, uh, we were talking before the show, an old cliche is if you want to know how somebody on a first date is going to treat you in the future, observe how they treat the waiter or the waitress, because that's going to be you very soon. If they're courteous, polite, and so forth, great. If they're really impolite or obnoxious, that's a sneak peek. In the sense with clients, I think the other thing that works successfully, which is no fault of your own, is to expect that you're going to have, like in dating, a stage, almost like a value ladder of how far the relationship goes. The first steps of a relationship should be no more than a quick coffee date, a five minute coffee date. Learn about the person's attributes before you get into the details of whatever it is that the project is about. Are they complete a-hole? Are they incapable of communicating clearly? Do they dump a 400-page document on every email when they talk to you? Or do they leave out all the important points? Those things can be picked up, like in dating. Start with a coffee date. Maybe you go for a little walk in the park next. Maybe you then progress to dinner. Maybe eventually you end up going to a makeout session at a movie or something. But don't jump right from like, I meet you to let's talk about getting married because until you know the human being behind the business, you're going to be in trouble. And finally, <laughs> like in dating in your 50s, look into the person's history of relationships. Married and divorced? Kids, do they have custody? Okay, how many people have worked on this project before? Is there a legacy of 27 people before you, all of them being nickel and dime to death? Maybe contact some of them if it's known. Does this person have a history when you look up their email on the internet of that son of a bitch is the biggest blah, blah, blah? Or do they have a history on places like Upwork and so forth that, oh, wow, great payer, easy to work with and so forth. And you can also tell a lot about their business. If their business is known to be successful, successful people can be a-holes. There's lots of examples. I call out Larry Ellison, not that I know him, but just he's not got a nice reputation for a billionaire compared to some other billionaires. If this person has a business and there's things said about them, positive or negative on the internet, that's useful to know. But somebody who has a successful idea or business, I think more often than not, is likely to be very happy to pay you the fair value of what you deliver to them. Whereas people who have no money or are horribly you know, frustrated, stuck in the mud, many times are, are that way because of the fact they're not willing to see the value of what you can deliver and they're trying to nickel and dime you. So those things have kind of generally kept myself and those people I've taught in the past, uh, you know, freelancing, how to succeed. Because if you always think of dating and relationships the same way as business, you'll really have a great framework to fit in your skill set, which in this case may be one aspect of WordPress. Yeah, and um, I was tempted just to refer him, but I thought I just cannot refer him to anybody I I really like until I speak to him. Share the pain. Because I can't, I can't, in all honesty, just refer somebody that's going to be awful to somebody that I like. And is that, that like set, setting somebody up with your ex-wife or something? It is always, isn't it? Um, so I couldn't do you. that. But, <laughs> um, so... Um, but no, he rapidly, when I intervened and said, and, and said to him, Frank, this, we are not a good fit. We're not going to get on. He seemed, he exploded and started swearing. And sh <laughs> you know, don't they say that that's the, there's a great movie that I love uh, with Chaz Palminteri. And it was called, I think, something um, Brooklyn 
It was a it was a mobster movie. It had Robert De Niro, uh, the kid that looked like a young Robert De Niro before he went to jail for something stupid. But it was a great story about a kid growing up in Brooklyn where his father was a bus driver and there was a mafia boss and he was getting like influence from both guys about how to grow up. But the point was he was chasing some kid down the block one day and it was embarrassing to the local mob guy because he's like grabs the kid and the kid's name is C. He says, hey, what are you doing? The point was the kid, uh, the guy he was chasing owed the kid some money, 20 bucks. He says, you like the kid? And he says, no. He says, well, think of that 20 bucks as the best money you've ever spent because now that this kid owes you money, he will never bother you again. He'll stay out of your way. So consider yourself lucky when a client shows their colors early on because then you're not like halfway down the project and your brain is coming out of your ears, uh, you know, with where these problems may lie. This guy showed his colors really soon, right? That's great. So, so listeners and viewers, I'm sorry to be a little bit negative at the beginning of this, but I just wanted to give some background why we're doing this kind of hybrid episode of our round, round table show. Um, so let's go on something a little bit more pos- positive. How do we find clients that will match what we want to do for them and what they want done for them? You know, so there, there is a decent marriage there that both parties are reasonably happy how do we do that spencer what i found successful in the wordpress space is to think almost like a russian doll right like outer shell inner shell inner shell inner shell inner shell and see how far you could go on the inner shell of your specialty by way of the things that you've discovered people have as a pain point so for example <clears throat> in the early days of wordpress it was enough to teach people how to make a pretty website with this cool framework of WordPress. Because in those days, people were hand coding HTML. And sure, there's a subset of people wanted to learn HTML, but the business clients, the end user clients were really just, I want my business or something out there and I don't wanna be bothered. As time has progressed, there's been many layers of specialty. And where we are today is of course that WordPress is in an outstanding framework of tools that in a vertical sense, do everything and anything you want compared to using uh, another kind of a platform or other SaaS product. So the clients that are today valuable are not interested in pretty websites, in my opinion. They're interested in either the complete business solution. So you go one layer in from pretty website to, I want somebody that can put together the business solution. Now you've got subsets. I'm gonna speak on behalf of John. Maybe John's clients are like, I have the website, have the business running, but I need help with traffic generation. I need help with SEO, I need help with Google placement. In my particular case, the clients need help with, I have a business and I've got an okay stream of traffic, but I'm not converting enough people to my list. I'm not converting enough people who come in to paying customers or I have problems with churn or I have a problem with organizational technology. So everything inside the site mechanical, especially with marketing automation, a wealth of things you can solve. Go one step further. Inside of, let's say, traffic generation, there's a million different areas, right? It could be SEO, it could be your, your Google Analytics, it could be you know something with page ranking. Inside the site, do they need help with marketing automation to connect to CRM to their WordPress ecosystem? Do they need a better way to organize their content with a learning management plugin? Those opportunities mean I could go one step further and I could say, I have a pain solution that I can show you on a billboard, very specific formula for a billboard that solves one of those many things that is the key, the kind of attractor, the draw, the magnet, lead magnet, that will pull you into a conversation where as soon as you realize I can solve that one thing for you, you can find anything else in your ecosystem of WordPress that is broken and dump it on me. And I'd be like, sure, sure. So for example, because again, we, we have a relationship with marketing automation and Jack's plugin. That has been the key that as of late was the main lead magnet for us versus in the past when it was teaching freelancers how to do stuff with pretty websites. If you have an existing CRM or you know, marketing automation platform and then you have WordPress, most people today who are smart business people do not know how to connect these that they can connect or what would be the benefit of connecting. By focusing on that alone and by having a relationship with an an area where these people may reside, could be a Facebook forum, could be another website, could be another business person, could be somebody refers, I can specifically say, call me for free if you want help with how to do your marketing automation. 
between your favorite plug, uh, CRM and WordPress. That free conversation always leads to, okay, tell me about you. Because they don't care about me. It's not about Spence. It's not about you as the freelancer. It's about them as the person. What's your pain? Talk to me about your problems. As soon as you let people feel like they're okay to talk freely about it, it's a huge relief and it also builds a rapport or relationship because people want to talk about themselves. They feel better just by being able to share their problems. Once they start doing it, I take copious notes in this very high tech system here from 1966 and I write down key things that they say to me. Why? Because I say them back to them. It's a psychology fact, if not a trick or a technique, that if you take notes about what people say to you and then say it back to them, you are reinforcing in their mind that you hear them, understand them, you're the person with whom they want to have a relationship. No different than in dating. Tell me about your family. Tell me about your job. Where'd you grow up? If you can say that back to the person, I guarantee you're going to get to a second date. Once they tell you that information, have a system. I call it a TV dinner. By productizing a complex service into a billboard format, it's very easy to convey a call to action. So for example, imagine you are driving down the highway, you've been driving for hours, what do billboards do for people who are hungry? They don't list out 10,000 words in 12 point font about like the benefits of their low fat beef hamburger. They say, hungry? That's the pain point. We have the best cheeseburgers in California. That's the, we solve the pain for you. Third thing, call to action. Turn right at exit 27, first door on your right. That's what you want people to do. And in the same way, you tell me about your pain, I listen. I hear the things that will let me give you a billboard. What's my billboard? Yes, we can connect your CRM to your WordPress site. Here's how we do it. We've got a prefabricated kit that's a fixed cost for everybody. Maybe it's two price levels, maybe it's three. It's easy to understand, easy to consume. What's your call to action? Here, I'll send you the proposal today so you can get started and try this relationship with me. And if you don't like it, you don't have to go farther. But if you love it, yes, we can do all the other things. Simple, succinct, you can repeat it with everybody. And it builds that thing that ultimately leads to being able to see how it is to work with the person because I've had the call, I've already heard them, they've talked to me, I've gotten to talk to them and see if they call me an a-hole or they were listening. If I send them a proposal and they ask follow-up questions or whatever, I get to see how they interact via email. I've got the full Monty of what it's gonna be like if we get to date number two or three. But I put in that filter, which is the next step after the free time that I give you. And it's usually, you know, it could be 15 minutes. Sometimes I go longer if they're really a good candidate. Their filter is the tripwire. I sent them the proposal for what they specifically asked for, which was the call to action for their pain point. If they pay, that's a winning relationship most often. Yeah. If they balk, it's all over. Okay, I, you, you got me for free. Use the free advice. You know, it's all good for you. Ta-da. And that's the formula. I think that's great. I'm going to let John answer this when we come back. Um, but before we go for a break, folks, I want to talk about one of our great sponsors, and that's WP Fusion. WP Fusion, what are they? Well, basically, in your technology stack, obviously, you should have WordPress. If you've got WooCommerce, um, Lifter LMS, Learn Dash, any of those great products that we mention regularly on the podcast. But you should also have your CRM, Drip, Active Campaign, MailChimp, there's a host of them. Um, to communicate, put that communication, that ability on steroids for 2019, where you want to do all this autom automation around your marketing, you need WP Fusion. And WP Fusion enables these two important parts of your technology stack to communicate flawlessly. So if that sounds interesting for your clients or for yourself, go to WP Fusion website and look at their packages. And I've got great news for you listeners and viewers. Um, WP Fusion have offered a special deal to you. Um, if you use the coupon code WP Tonic, all in uppercase, you get 25% off any of their packages. And that's an exclusive offer to you listeners, viewers of the WP Tonic podcast show. We'll be back in a few moments, folks. 
we're coming back. We've had a bit of a hybrid show. I, I've kind of, I, I've confessed to my appalling customer handling ability, but I think I was provoked. And <laughs> I don't think it was going to be a marriage that was going to work out. It was going to be a marriage of hell anyway. Um, John, um, what did you think of what Spence said in the first half of the show? And secondly, how what's been your own road in defining what your customers should be and what you should offer them? Right. Excellent question. Um, I think a lot of people in the WordPress space struggle with this, like how to get clients. This is the number one thing that I hear, uh, you know, on Twitter and Slack channels and Facebook groups, everybody, you know, how do I get more clients? I need, you know, the revenue. What I can only speak to what's worked for me and it's been a long, hard road. I've tried everything. (laughs) I've failed at a lot of things, but this is the three things that have worked for me the most is getting referrals from current clients, good clients, uh, getting referrals from other people within the industry and then attracting people uh, through SEO. Now, the strongest leads are referrals from either uh, colleagues or um, the, the current clients. SEO, like people will often fill out an inquiry, but and I'll jump on a phone call with them, but it, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. It all depends. But they're finding me that way. I think the key to the referral thing is your colleagues have to know what box to put you into. And here's the problem, and here's what I've in the first, uh, you know, four or five years of my WordPress career. Um, if you just label yourself as a, a WordPress developer or a WordPress web designer, it's too and but everybody does. I have WordPress website so very in the planet that can do that. The only people that you're going to attract if you market yourself that way is people who already have a WordPress website. Because if they just if they don't have a website, they're not going to know what WordPress is. If you look at like other larger uh, agencies. Take, for example, like FastSpot over in Baltimore, uh, Tracy Halverson, who was on this show a couple of years ago. They're a Drupal shop, but they don't advertise themselves as a Drupal shop. They <clears throat> specialize in doing websites for large universities and large colleges. That's what they do. And that's what they have in the per- their portfolio. That's what they put on their site. So when um, a, a person from a major university needs a new website and they go to, to the fast spot site, they know that that's who they're going to call. Similarly, that's what I found that I had to do with my own thing. When I first started going down this path of specializing in SEO, I was, I was kind of vague with my messaging at first. And then it, it I, like Spencer was saying, I concentrated it down into a very specific thing. I'm helping do SEO for manufacturing companies. So if, it's, if you're a manufacturing company and you come to, to my site, there's only a handful of other people that put that front and center. I could name you know, less than 10 agencies that make that their focal point. So by doing that, I've put myself in a very short list and my colleagues and my other clients know that they can refer me for that. And like Spencer was saying, once people, once people sign up for your service, whether it's SEO or WordPress development or building a website or marketing automation or email marketing or whatever it is, they're going to come to you with other problems because you've established trust and they're going to come to you to solve it. Either you, you can do it or you can, you know, tag team somebody in and uh, you know, bring them in. But the the whole thing is getting them on board at first. And to do that, you have to put yourself in as small of a box as possible so that people that come to you uh, know what you do. Don't make it vague. Don't make it huge because then you're, you're competing with like everybody in the world. Lastly, I'll say this. If you label yourself as a WordPress web designer, WordPress developer, I build WordPress websites, this what I have found is it really does attract a particular part of the market. And it's maybe not 
the most desirable. Like I said, it's people who already have a WordPress website. It's not just people who in general need a website. It's better to maybe leave that part out because you are going to, a, a certain amount of your leads are going to be the lower part of the market. And that's not a knock. That's just what I found through my own, you know, travels. Uh, so I would focus, find a type of person that you serve. Uh, if you look at, you know, Sarah Dunn, um, she specializes in SEO for wedding planners um, and wedding specialists. That's, you know, focusing down. If you can find one thing, whether it's dentists, doctors, um, psychiatrists, you know, whatever it is, construction companies, whatever it is, find that one thing, focus on it. And then that way, when people come there, they're going to see like, hey, this is the person, this is the, the team that can help me with that. I, I want to okay. add something too, because John brings up a really good point. I, I call this technique the birdie on a hippo's back. So, you know, those pictures of a big hippo yep. and it's got a little parasite eating bird that it has a symbiotic relationship with. And I think you have two places where you can find traffic or potential customers. We kind of are, are skirting around. Either one of them should be the smallest fishing hole with the most prospects instead of the largest blue ocean because that's where people are aggregating. But whether it comes from, let's say, a specific group here or there, two ideas to conceive of. One is, if you have something you can narrow down that is a pain solution for the WordPress community, except that you're better off with being a powerful solution that you could charge a premium for because in general, those that are familiar with tinkering with WordPress, as John was alluding to, are penny wise dollar foolish, but like they'll, they'll bust your chops about, oh, I can do this myself, I can figure it out. So it better be something that you know how to do that they can't do, or be something that you can white label so that they can mark it up for their clients. So for example, we have a lot of agency work with people who work with WordPress, but they don't know anything about what we do. So we say, look, we'll give this to you at wholesale, which is really retail. They then mark it up to super retail because they've got a large client. The other spectrum of people, I agree with what John said, find the end user's particular cohort. I'm a yoga instructor. I run a bakery. I am accountants. Focus your solution on the thing you do for that group of people, regardless of any reference to WordPress, because the clients don't care. They only need to know that I have an HR solution for restaurant owners. And by the way, it's work, working on WordPress. Who cares? They need the HR solution. They're going to search for HR solutions or who provides an HR solution. They're not going to say HR solutions for WordPress. So either of those techniques work, but definitely you have to give yourself the benefit of the doubt. If you swim in the WordPress pond, you've got to get past the tinkerers because there are people out there that think the value of your really huge thing is worth pennies because, oh, I could just find my own plugin and do it myself. And that's a great filter to get rid of. I wanted to jump in on something that you're saying there, Spencer. If someone has more time than they do money, they're not a good fit. Right. And, and the people who have enough time to screw around with their own website like that are probably not busy enough. Their business is not booming enough for me to want to work with them. If yeah. they, I need somebody whose business is so busy that it keeps them hopping and they need somebody that they can trust. To, to come in and do that for them that knows better. If, if you, you got too much time on your hands, you're probably not a good fit. I think, I think that's fantastic, John. I, I think that's what, that is one of the keys. If they've got time to muck around like hour upon hour, um, trying to install plugins themselves. And um, this was the contradiction of this guy, this geezer, uh, English term, listeners and viewers, geezer. <laughs> this geezer, um, he was saying in his video that he sent to me that they were selling, they've sold thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of dollars worth of product. But on the other hand, he's installing plugins himself and mucking around with this website. That, that, that's a red flag because that's a contradiction in itself, isn't it? Uh, um, I want to, I want to throw something on that before we leave the point, a great way to get to the heart of where their value proposition lies and what they really have to spend. 
I've been using this for years, but it was very well said by Jason Swank, who's a very successful agency owner, and he talks on this on his blog too, is that use the technique of having them tell you what they want to spend. In the old days, I would just, I mean, long before I met Jason and stuff, I would say, do you have a budget in mind, right? But he added to it, what I learned is a great thing to use is that if they say, I don't know what my budget is, the response is, oh, well, then you're okay with a million dollars, right? And they go, no, 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 not a million. Well, you obviously know that you don't want to spend a million. So what is it? A hundred thousand, 50,000, 40. And you force them to be capped because you're not going to bid against yourself. You say, tell me what this solution you need on that billboard. What's your pain point is worth to you. And then they either know and give you a range, which by the way, is going to work in your favor because they're either going to tell you a number that's way higher than you would have charged them otherwise, or way lower. If it's way lower, then you have to give them the, you know, the come to realization talk. If they say way higher, now you're talking because now you're like, you're a special customer and I can do it for less than you ever imagined possible because maybe their number was five times more than it's really your, your normal retail price. But by forcing them to declare it and not accepting that, I don't know what my budget is, you can hold a mirror up to them and then they've made a psychological stake in the ground that they can't undo because once they've committed themselves to the, you know, here's my budget range, you adapt the project to fit their budget. People shop for fancy stuff all the time. Here in Chicago, we've got Michigan Avenue. You can go to some crazy Gucci or something store. That same purse that sells in Walmart for $15 made out of Corinthian leather sells for $1,500 on Michigan Avenue. Whether somebody buys it at Walmart or Michigan Avenue has more to do with their personal story or their feelings than whether the purses are actually different. That's what you got to understand, I think, to succeed in the WordPress space is that people who value the solution you can offer will self-declare where they think that number is at. Then you have a choice whether to continue dating them. That's great. Now, let's switch it because we, we've been talking about ident getting clients, identifying clients that you're a good match for. And I think anybody that listening to this podcast that's a consultant, designer, um, developer hopefully has got something from this discussion. But let's switch it to the other side. How does a client find a good match, uh, a good agency or a good developer, a good freelancer to work with? What are some of the things that the client has to watch for? What do you reckon, John? Mm, that's an excellent question. So uh, I think the, the hard part is um, who if you're a client and you've shopped for, you know, web development or web design or marketing automation or SEO before, you're going to be much better off. But a lot of these people, maybe it's been, uh, you know, five or 10 years since they've had to look for somebody. Maybe they've never looked for somebody before. And how do you find somebody? One thing I would do is, you know, make a short list of people who look appealing to you realize that you might have to pay you know for quality don't just shop on price uh, but talk to each of these people make a short list reach out to them contact them you know have a phone conversation see if you get a good vibe see if you can work together um, and do some research on your own such as you know look for reviews if somebody's got you know uh, like a two a two star average on you know google that's that's probably a bad sign um if they have no reviews at all um that's a little suspicious most people i know have have some oh, yeah. can i just slightly yeah jump in interrupt because isn't it also linked to a video recently one of our panelists matt Madeos did called the digital handshake right did, good video where, where he was talking about when he was doing business with his father when they owned a, a gm um, franchise um, that they did business they wanted to see the person they wanted to handshake and it was linked to a, a recent story that we'll probably be discussing next week about uh, a theme and plug-in company that was that's been investigated at the present moment for dicey things um, and he was saying that company did a lot of business with people but these people he had never heard of it 
most of the people that established in the WordPress community had never heard of it. But people were buying things from this company. But there was no there was no address on the website. There was no um, video of the founder or CEO. There was no what he what Matt called the digital handshake. Um, do you think uh, a lot of people should be looking for that? You know, how long has that person been involved in the community? Do they have an address? Can you? Is there a face to the person that's doing that's offering the service to you? What do you reckon about that? Yeah, job? absolutely, absolutely. Because a lot of web design companies, it's like you know, here's about you know about us, and it's like I I don't know who's on the team. It's still like some vague you know, statement like, oh, we're a team of experienced professional, blah, blah, blah. And we will work hard to make your project a success. But there's no pictures of anybody. You don't know who's on the team. You don't know if they're, you know, outsourcing uh, to, to somewhere else and just pocketing the difference. You, you don't know, you know, wh what their client record is. I would definitely look for some sort of clues about them. Um, you know, as far as that, and I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this into like Google, like their company name, and see if you could find what press is about that, because I'm gonna tell a story. There's a uh, another agency that that was talking with me, and they were expressing a frustration about a player in their local market uh, that does you know digital marketing, and they're like, well, you know, oh, a lot of people like go with this guy, but this guy has been in legal trouble. And he's, you know, had like court, like repossessed like vehicles to pay off client debt. And he's been arrested and all this stuff. And people still do business with him. It's very frustrating. Um, th look for those sorts of things. Because, you know, if, if, if you dig, you're, if there's anything bad or anything shady, you're going to find it. And it might save you a lot of pain later on down the road. I've, you know, I've had lots of cases like this where, you know, uh, clients came to me complaining about their current age or not clients, I should say, but prospects came to me about their, you know, current agency. And I did a, just a little bit of digging and it's like, oh, there's all this other stuff that they're, you know, people complaining, writing like, you know, 10 page letters about, you know, how they got screwed over. So look for that sort of thing. Yeah, um, Spencer, I don't know if you were aware of the latest video from Matt Medeos and about, you know, he was talking about this digital handshake and how amazed he is that some people do business and there's nothing to build confidence or um, who you really are dealing with. What, what did you think of his video and what, what me and John have just been saying? Yeah, I mean, you know, I was on the show with Matt, and I think his point is something that is really a foundational element of any good relationship. So let's go back to that, because that's how I would like to phrase this. The relationship between a freelancer and the client is reciprocal. The client needs to use the same kind of a consideration. So for example, in the world we live in, would you, for example, want to be with somebody who is a stranger living in a strange land that has no presence whatsoever. You don't know where they're working, what they look like, what their situation is, and then entrust them to, here, here's the keys to my home, here's my kids' names, here's where they play. You wouldn't give a stranger that doesn't give you any information about you know, themselves and what they're up to. You wouldn't give them the kind of information that's, obviously, it's a, it's a door there. Uh, <laughs> uh, you wouldn't give them the kind of information that is that personal or private about you and your family so why would you entrust your business or your business operation to somebody? The reciprocal thing you would need to look for as a client would be, for example, if that person has a presence, have they made videos to teach people? Have they published blog posts? Are they present on Facebook and various groups? Do they have products where they actually put their real picture and a real biography? Hi, I'm a single dad of three boys, one of which just walked through my office a second ago. Is that the kind of person that I want to do business with because they're based in Chicago versus in some country that maybe I don't know where our hours are going to conflict with, right? So think of the person that you're going to hire in those terms and decide for yourself, how comfortable would I be turning over my livelihood to somebody who I, I don't know what they're up to, what their family like is life, what their business situation is, has anybody said good things about? Of course, those will be factors. Ultimately, there are situations where somebody is new in the market. Let's say you're a young person or you're an old person who's coming into 
freelancing in the WordPress space. You have to stake your own claim there. And the best way to do it, in my opinion, is to become a willing volunteer of your time and energy for free in those spaces where that is still welcome. Right now, that happens to be more often Facebook groups. But if you can be a person who answers questions for free, posts content for free, such as in Quora, Quora is still a great place to do that. You can make your own reputation whereby when somebody Googles you, you then show up as like, oh, top author on Quora for WordPress uh, SEO or membership stuff. That's the way that I did it when I shifted from an off-world business to WordPress. And I think it's still true today because those are the places that you demonstrate for free the value you give to others. And by doing that, then the next step is now that you've done it for free, you've got social proof that you made on your own, you can then invite them to that free conversation. Now, there are people who have plugins and other things that they can't have the time to do all this stuff. If you don't, then at least get a video of yourself, for God's sake, as the founder of the company. Hi, I'm Spence from WP Launchify, and we've got the best new plugin that does blah, 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 blah. Watch how easy it is for you to do it. Instead of one of those computer voice things, hello, our plugin does this, because it's like, what the hell is going on? The thing that's a takeaway, I've said this on every show that I've been on with you, 2019, there is a fissure, a gap, a, a, a big space now between people who are willing to continue participating in an anonymous world of trolls versus I want a real person. And I'm finding personally way more success by attracting people with my openness, as I've always done, of I'm a real dude with real issues and real things running a real business while I'm running my family life. I would like to show you how I can reduce your pain because I can appreciate your particular problems. And those people who come over appreciate, wow, you're the first person that actually was willing to have a phone call with me for free about this so I can at least figure out what the heck it is that is wrong with me, right? And I think that's where the money lies for those who are freelancers. Well, the funny thing about this um, experience this morning, the only reason that I, um, well, it was a, a unknown call, which I normally did, but I, I because I emailed this guy and then the, I got this call about a minute later, based on my experience, I was pretty sure it's probably him. But I was going to refer it to you, John, if he hadn't turned out to be a total psychopath. Because Oh, thanks. Um, <laughs> but no, if he had turned out to be uh, half a reasonable, because it was a good match for you, because he was looking for SEO services and right. e-commerce. Right. And, um, but what I found bizarre was why he was approaching me, because I think it's reasonably clear, my website, that I want e-learn, e-learning entrepreneurs. Uh, you know, I'm in the membership learning management area. Um, I'm not in, I, I offer WooCommerce as a package um, on one of my packages with flow carts because um, if they want to sell digital products, they want to sell physical products with their courses and that. But I'm not in, uh, as it's pretty, I think my website is pretty clear that that is what, my bag is what I do. Um, and he, it, what he was looking for was totally had nothing to do yeah. with what was on my website. So I presumed he... I'm, I'm, I'm going to answer that for you, Jonathan. I'm going to tell you why he reached out to you and, and why you, you're, as we were talking yesterday, you had your most successful year ever. And a lot of it is I met you and, and Bill, the original co-host back in 2014. You've been publishing this podcast regularly weekly and for the past couple of years twice weekly since 2014 that's five years only a handful of people have done that uh, that's one thing you show up you always show up um you're you you have your you know uh, you're on facebook you're on twitter you you're pushing this stuff out to youtube and out to the podcast a lot of people that i've never met or, or never heard of like have heard of this show and, you know, I've had people approach me, you know, from, you know, like old episodes that, that we did together. They've heard of this show. You have consistently shown up uh, in this community and built this podcast from the ground up, from nothing, like into to one that is people know that they can count on and, and receive like information. And that's, I think, why 
you you get leads. That's that's a big part of it. You blog, you you put stuff on your site. You know, all those things go out into the world and we think that they just kind of disappear into into nothingness, but every like little piece of of you know, content, whether it's a video, a blog post or a podcast or whatever, it goes out there and it reaches somebody. And, and that is how you build yourself up. Well, yeah, I think that's totally true. And I think, um, just to wrap up, I, I think if you're, if you're looking to be successful in your own business and maybe doing some agency work, um, you really got to understand you, you got to be producing content that, pushes out your message doesn't it you know pushes out who you are what you're looking for who your ideal clients are and how you can help them and if you don't push those you're you're just going to be invisible aren't you spencer yeah i mean the problem that and john brings up a good point that you know there's a drip by drip effect the sooner the one gets started the sooner that one accumulates the kind of let's say track record that's useful again i don't put as much value into on my own business SEO or law, you know, kind of organic search as I do in relationship building. I think the shortcuts yeah. to relationship buildings, like find somebody who's got a thriving community whose members have that pain that you can solve, then go help them all for free. So you build your reputation yeah. in a little tiny fishing hole. But again, the longer part of it is that no matter what you're going to do, starting to get a reputation that shows up online and being transparent about yourself is essential. So you can come up with lots of gimmicks like in the old days it used to be have a moniker or a name or something easy to say easy to remember and to differentiate yourself but i think today it's as much a value if not more so to be truly authentic because i think today people are exhausted by the games and the gimmicks so your real name your real place your real space obviously keep certain privacy elements that you want like you don't have to publish your home address but just be a real person because i think we're really heading in that direction. The complexity of the platform capabilities of WordPress gives so many opportunities for specialists that you can find, uh, and I wanted to mention this earlier, but it's an old technique. John mentioned I'd rather be like, you know, the, the most specialized guy. There was an old thought about that. Like, I would rather sell that one unique hexadecimal helicopter blade bolt that I'm the only seller in the world for that than the one that sells all the other hardware combined because they can only get that from me. And that's the point. If I have 10 customers that will pay me a million bucks for that one bolt, I can spend the rest of my time enjoying whatever I do in my life, uh, you know, for fun. And that's way different than being a commodity. Yeah, I had a client, uh, a possible client approach me a couple of weeks ago, nothing like this morning. Um, the conversation was much more respectful. Um, but I, I didn't get, get her and she was an ideal client, established business in New York. Um, been in business for five years, using um, um, Lifter LMS with WooCommerce, had a graphic designer. Um, obviously, the graphic designer got a bit too deep into the project. It was too demanding and had bailed out. And that does happen um, when people take on projects that are a little bit too outside their technical abilities um and she seemed ideal and then she started asking me about my business how long i've been in business and the organization and i said we are a distributed company we mostly work from home i have um people freelancers on retainers i have other relationships and that's when she said, I don't think I'm looking for somebody that has a physical office. And I do have a physical office with a, I, sh I share a facility um, with other companies. So I have access to a conference room when it's necessary in Reno. And, but she can seem to grasp the concept of a distributed company. And she was looking, um, she's probably gone with a, a, a agency that has, a physical um, address, uh, a physical address, or full-time employee kind of setup, and that kind of intrigued me because um, I would look more at how long the person's been in business, how active they've been in, in the area that I have my pain with, rather than that some generalistic 
agency. But um, what do you reckon about that? To wrap it up, John, what do you reckon about that? Well, that might be her way of minimizing risk. And yes. it, it, you know what? There's a lot of things you cannot fight the the, the pattern of of how people think. And and yeah. something that Spencer touched on before, like people act in ways like in one area of if if they're congruent in one area of their life they're going to be congruent in all the areas in the same way so for her she probably thinks you know people who get in their cars drive to an office like every morning punch a clock and like sit at their uh, desk you know basically a factory floor for building websites they think that is you know real work and like people who work from home like me or you or Spence not real work, even though I can assure you it very much is. Yeah. Um, so I did, this might be her way of minimizing risk, and she might have got burned by a, a distributed company before. Yeah, well, that was, yeah. you know, I didn't ask her, but that was my yeah. conclusion, and it's probably linked to hiring um, a certain level of freelancer. Um, you, you know, that's why I wanted to ask both you and Spencer about the question on the other side of it if you're a client what you should look at well I think we've had a pretty good discussion um let's go for our tips of the week section and then we'll wrap up the show and my tip for this week is a product called Groundhog and that's groundhog.io and basically what Groundhog is it's a marketing optimization for WordPress but it's a plugin and it's a hybrid service and you can do all the optimization inside of WordPress. And um, the founder of the company is going to be coming on the show um, to discuss it and it should be interesting. So if you're into marketing optimization, go and have a look at Groundhog. I've been playing around with it with a little, little bit um i haven't come to any total conclusions about it but i'm still playing around with it um spencer have you got anything to share with the listeners and viewers sure uh we were talking the other week about optimizing wordpress and how there was that uh company that's working on i can't think of the name for a second but they're working on a solution that makes static website or dynamic javascript website on wordpress nevertheless this is designmoto.com slash static dash pages. Essentially what it lets you do is if there are reasons why you want to make a page static, for example, using a favorite page builder for almost all of our clients will make the end creation then turn it into a static output because then it loads immediately rather than having to be processed by PHP and the other page builder. If you want to integrate that into your WordPress ecosystem, this plugin makes it dead simple without having to go into the root of your, let's say server, to have the URL structure of WordPress address that page when you're actually just using the URL. So it's very handy for landing pages or things that it's not gonna have a lot of dynamic stuff. You just wanna say, hey, here's a video, here's a call to action, click the button and submit a form. Really handy for speed and also helps overall and just kind of like where you can saving people time over the WordPress pages and the WooCommerce. Oh, that's great. John, have you got something to share with the listeners? Yeah, I almost forgot about the tip. I, um, so something that I saw in um, a Facebook group like recently, people were asking about building uh, NAPW citations, which is the mentions of your uh, company, uh, not just on Google My Business or, or Facebook. But a lot of people know about Moz Local. That's good for getting the top tier stuff. But a lot of people you know, wonder about how to get the, the second tier uh, citations. And uh, people have asked, like, should I use it Yext or, or what? But one of the services that I've used for those second tier citations uh, that are not covered by Moss Local is a service called Bright Local. And uh, they have a, a specific thing called the Citation Burst, where you can order uh, somebody to go in and build uh, those mentions of your company, you just, you know, give them the name, address, phone number, website, and a little, um, like a photo, a little description in the categories, and they'll go in and do that for you. And it's a lot of time saving because that can definitely just be time consuming. Having somebody else do it for you is just a little bit of a time saver. 
So yeah, they're a great company. I've used them myself. Um, so let's wrap it up. Um, John, how can people find out more about you, your knowledge and what you're up to? Well, you can definitely find me at my website, which is lockdown seo.com and also check out my youtube channel uh go to youtube search hashtag lockdown seo because i am publishing videos every single day wow and um spencer how can people find out more about you your faults and what you're up to exactly <laughs> just google me for all my faults but if you want to find me uh wp launchify.com there's a nice blue button you can do a free phone call or you'll actually find me because we do onboarding calls for several authors, including for WP Fusion. So if you're curious about marketing automation for WordPress, uh, anything to do with e-commerce or learning management, and you want to just talk through some of the problems, happy to have a phone call with you as well. You can get that for free from WP Fusion's home site, uh, homepage, or uh, our YouTube channel is WP Launchify. And I'm the founder of WP Tonic, this podcast. And I can't believe I've been doing it literally for five years. Oh, my God. And I'm easy to get contact. There's ways on the website you can phone me up and start abusing me anytime you want to. I'm there, I'm there available for your abuse, listeners and viewers. No, I'm only joking. Uh, Rob, but I am available if you want to find out more about learning management system, the e-learning um environment um it's a passion with me um and i love that discussion we'll see you next week folks bye <laughs>